Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're back in the fish room. I thought I'd give you a quick update of what's been going on because a few things have changed. We've been getting some work done. We've got some new things to show you and we've got some new fish. So this rack here in the fish room, these are six foot by two foot racks. It's now full. It's full of fish. We're just doing water changes at the minute. So we've got discus, we've got more discus, we've got angels, we've got stair by quarries, we've got snakeheads, pea puffers, more discus, Congo Tetras. I love the fact that I've now got a full rack. There's no empty tanks on this rack. It's looking absolutely fantastic. It's a bit dirty and I'm doing water changes, but other than that, it's looking fantastic to come in and just stand here and marvel at all the fish. So I'm doing water changes on this tank at the moment, um, as you can see here. We talked about my water change woes in past videos where I've got a water butt down here with a sump pump in it, and I pump it up through a series of pipes out into the driveway and away. That's a work in progress. There's too many other things going on for me to finish that particular project. I want to pump it into another big IBC tote and use that to go to the garden. That will come, um, but not quite there yet. But refilling all the tanks, I just had one, one tap here. I run everything through an HMA filter. It dechlorinates all the water and goes straight into the tanks, like so. Um, I just have one tap here in the garage. It was cold water so it was taking forever to do water changes. I either had to fill up another container, get up to temperature if I wanted to do big water changes or do very small water changes constantly because I didn't want to shock the fish by making it too cold. So we were getting some work done on the house and we've got a little special feature now. I'll show you. So we've been getting an upgrade to the central heating in the house and I now have this 250 litre or 300 litre unvented cylinder. So. For the house, this means I get hot water at the same pressure as the cold water, um, but we've got hot water on tap all the time now. And my plumber has very kindly sourced me a shower, a shower valve basically. So this is taken off a shower, now got hot and cold running water, and this is now hooked up to my HMA filter, and I can dial in the temperature to whatever I want. So I've got it at a nice balmy 26 degrees at the moment, just so it's easier to use in all the tanks. I don't need to keep fiddling with it, but I can get any temperature I want out of that do the large water changes without shocking the fish and keep everything at the same temperature. So that's fantastic upgrade number one. Upgrade number two is where this mess of a tank is at the moment. That's going to get moved out of the way over to the other side of the fish room. And one of the radiators that we're upgrading in the house upstairs, we'll take the old one and we'll bring that down here and have a radiator in this fish room, seal it off so it's completely insulated, sealed off from the rest of the garage and the fish room will have its own central heating and I can heat the room rather than heating the tank so I can save a few pennies. That's the theory anyway, so if you've joined me on my live streams, you'll hear me talking about this. I'm pretty convinced this is going to be the way to go to save money, to heat the room and then not have to heat the tanks as much. I'll still have the ability because I'll have heaters in all the tanks, but that's it's a test. If you want to see whether it works out, I'll be keeping a log of all these things. Uh, click that subscribe button, as all good YouTubers say, and we can find out find out together and see whether or not it actually does work. It's all going to be hooked up to the smart home stuff, so it will have a Tado smart radiator valve, so I can turn it on and off whenever I want to. The room, once it's up to temperature, water is actually really good at storing heat. So if I've got mega tank here, if that's full of water, up to temperature, all these other tanks, all up to temperature, I can turn off the radiator in here and actually let the air cool down and the water will store the heat to let me work in here a bit more comfortably. I can do all the jobs that I need to do, get back out and then get it back on the proper schedule so it keeps at the, the optimum temperature for the room. And it should be more efficient. But like I say, stay tuned if you want to find out if that actually is true or not. We've been moving fish around, we, it's just me. I've been moving fish around as well, so things have changed a little bit. So I'll just do a quick run through of where we were up to in the fish room and show you the new fish. <laughs> so this is the other rack. We've got one rack over there that's full, one rack over there that's a bit of a dumping zone if I'm completely honest. Uh, we've got these four tanks. These two are set up um, currently empty. I mean, there is some stuff in there, but there's just some filter media and stuff running. They're running, they're up to temperature, they're ready for fish, and I do have more fish to go and get, more on that later. Um, but they're just ready to be filled and get running, they're ready to go. I might make another tank under here, I am a big six foot long tank. That might be our African tank that we've been talking about, Congo Biotope, but we'll see. Over on this side, 
Um, oh, a bit of bad news really. So I've set up the first of the tanks on the top here and that's just got the killifish in it. So you can just about see him up there. He was one of a pair, but I unfortunately have lost the female to my own poor judgment. As ever, these things are usually my fault. I don't like to blame anyone else. It was definitely my fault. Uh, the reason it was my fault is I had them in this tank. Initially because I hadn't set up the other tanks and I just put them in here. Um, I just shouldn't have done. The way this tank works is in the corner there's an uplift. And I thought I'd fitted the sponges super tight so nothing could get in. But the female got in there and went down and got trapped in the uplift and unfortunately died before I had the chance to do anything about it. So, super gutted about that, um, but like I say, nothing I could do, nothing I can blame other than my own stupidity. I should have thought about that. It was obvious it was going to happen. I mean, I thought I'd covered it, but obviously not. Um, these things happen and hopefully I can learn from it. So I know now, don't put small fish in those tanks because they can get trapped and they will. So we're getting, I'm in the process of setting up these tanks at the top. In the middle row, we've got all the endlers and guppies. Uh, and then down below, just waiting for a top up is Humphrey. Yeah, waiting for a top up and waiting for a feed by the looks of things. But come on, human, feed me. We'll get you in a minute, buddy. Uh, and then nothing in that tank in the corner. I'm just breaking that down. Well, other than snails, I'm keeping snails just in case I get back into puffers again. And then that brings us on to mega tank. So no glass still, obviously. That's the next thing to do: glass and sort out sump and plumbing. I have all the plumbing. Everything's here. I've got all the bulkheads. I've got all the pipes. And I just need to go onto that. But I've finished the inside. So the inside. This is liquid rubber. I've gone with liquid rubber. I'm not um, using fiberglass. Yes, I know. Everyone's telling me what disaster this is going to be. It's very much a test. If this all goes wrong, fine. I'll just use a pond liner and it'll be a pond liner tank. Um, but this should work. I've given it every opportunity. It says you have to use between three and five coats just to make sure that it's watertight for any application. I've done way more than that, so if this fails, it's not going to be my fault. I'm going to make sure that if it does... I've given it every chance. Let's, let's put it that way. I just need to get on to the glass ordering. And I'm having a proper nightmare of getting anyone to give me a coat for glass. The only people that are actually willing to engage with me are the, the ones that are telling me, yes, £10,000, we'll get you a bit of glass. So we'll see, I'm still working on that. If you have any tips on glass, please leave them in the comment. Let me know if you've got any good leads. Um, I'm looking at either 19mm uh, thickness glass. This is it's basically 2.2 metres by 90 centimetres. Um, I'm looking at 19mm glass or 15mm glass. 15mm toughens should be much stronger than 19mm glass. I'm looking at low iron, I'm looking at laminated, I'm lo any, anything, any options, you should be good. I am obviously going to brace this, so I think I can get away with 15mm glass. It should be plenty strong enough for that. Um, but yeah, if you have any ideas, let me know. But stocking wise, if you've joined me in my live streams, I've been talking for a while about whether I was going to go with Oscars, big predator fish, big rays, peacock bass, all kinds of things and I do want to do all those things and there's just, there's only one type, there's only so many things I can do. And now, just to add to the confusion, I've got myself 20 odd discus. Planted discus tank? I don't need any more confusion, so I still don't know. I might do a poll at the weekend, uh, join me in the live stream, we'll talk about this a little bit more. It's, I'm so indecisive, I'm not normally indecisive. But when it comes to this, I'm so indecisive of what to use this for. I don't want to have something where I'm chopping and changing every six months and changing out the fish. I want a lifetime fish to be in here. I want this to be something I'm really happy with. I think that's what's making me indecisive, is I can't think what I want to keep in there. That's which is why I'm swaying to discus again. Because I know I love discus, I know I'm not going to get bored with them. But some of the other fish are way cool too. So. That's mega tank. So that leads us onto this rack. So we'll start with the new fish first. This tank, this tank, and this tank all have some new fish in it. So we already had the last set of discus that I bought, the four discus that I picked up um, from Corbin Discus, which sadly is shutting down. Tim, my good friend over at Corbin Discus, is deciding to, he's selling up, he's moving up to Scotland, to my homeland. Um, 
so he's closing down Corbin Discus sent me a message, made me an offer I couldn't refuse basically so I went over the other day and picked up 10 uh, small juvenile discus um, but 10 Martin Ung discus, there's nothing to be sniffed at so we've got 8 of them in here, 2 of them in there uh, some Pandavidose Firestones, Magnificent Eruptions hat you know my feelings on the names of discus but just have a look at them. Awesome colours, awesome shapes, awesome patterns. I couldn't ask for more than that. So in total, I think with my original ones in the tank down below, I've got about 23, 24, something like that. And um, lots of leopards, lots of mazes, lots of eruptions, lots of turks, all all shapes, sizes, patterns, colours. It's gonna be a feast for the eyes when I finally get my display tank back up and running. Um, but I'm quite enjoying them in here. I mean, we've gone a bit shy now because I'm standing in front of the tank waving my hands around. But I shall cut in some footage of them. Really nice looking fish, eating well, straight in the tank. They've only been in here since yesterday, so a day they've been in here. Uh, eating well, looking good, uh, looking happy. Couldn't be happier. In this tank here, we've got the angels. So these were the original angels that I've had for years now I've taken them from the old house they've come with me I did lose a couple of angels when we did the shift around I um, can't remember I think I mentioned it at the time but when we moved uh, when I had the Fishman Aquatics guys over and we moved all the tanks around and built all the racks and got everything set up um, a couple of days after that two of the angels lost a couple of them they just didn't handle the move very well so unfortunately the rest of them though doing fine um, had some breeding action going on there so I've had eggs a couple of times off these guys I've moved them over from the rack over there to here and as soon as I moved them they laid and then about a week later they laid again hate them straight away but we'll keep an eye on that they're currently sharing a tank with the stair by Corridoras and uh, all looking happy enough we've got the snake heads in this tank the snake heads I'm loving the snake heads they are coming along like nobody's business they spent the first few weeks after getting them just buried, hidden, would not come out for love nor money. This guy right the front. And um, so this guy generally hangs around the front. I think I've got a male female pair, but one of them generally hangs out at the front, one of them generally hangs out on the rock. Uh, and we sit there and they wait and then they come for food. So I've been feeding them a mixture of things. They've been taking dry food, I've been feeding them worms, and uh, what normal earthworms, mealworms, crickets, things like that that I had for the lizards. Uh, and really coming out, really starting to show some colours, showing some appetite, showing some hunting instincts and um, playing a little bit of chase but yeah, even putting on weight they're starting to grow as well that I can physically see them growing before my eyes um, loving these guys, definitely going to get them into a bigger tank and see what their development is going to turn out like but I want to snake it for so long and they're just absolutely fascinating just everything about them, kids have named them Mr Grumpy and Mrs Grumpy because they have got that mm. face but loving them they're doing really well and then the final tank here is this was going to be my latest purchase because at the weekend I picked these guys up I've got eight pea puffers um, kept pea puffers before love them so much personality in such a little tiny thing uh, they're doing really well in there seem to be happy this isn't like a care guide or anything like that but they're feeding well they're loving this little tank that I've got them in, so I've got eight. It's a good size group, I wouldn't want to go many smaller than that. I think six is kind of the lowest you want to get for a, a good size group. But I've wanted to get these guys again for so long, but every time I see them, I go to the place that's got them and they're sold out. But I happened to be in a garden centre at Wentworth and they just happened to have a load of people first, so I bought them all. <laughs> no, not all of them, they had a lot more, I could have got more. But I bought a group of eight. Um, so I've set the tank up with um, quite a thick bed of sand, some vegetation, just plants I've taken from other uh, tanks. Let them grow in, they'll do really well. But yeah, they're schooling quite well, showing quite well, um, eating well, happy, hunting, darting around the tank, really good. Down below we've got the original discus that I've had from my big display tank. If you are new here, I did have a big display discus display tank and in the move, crack the bottom somehow so I'm just waiting for some remodeling work to get finished and then we can get that sorted out but for now these guys are living down here perfectly fine doing well laying eggs like nobody's business and we've got eggs being laid in this tank we've got eggs being laid in one of the new tanks as well 
but yeah, everyone's doing well. I've added a bunch of new bristle noses. I've got a lot of long pin bristle noses. Um, no, I haven't. I've got one long pin bristle noses, one L201, and a bunch of other ancestral types that I got at the same time as I got my new discus. So they've distributed around all the tanks. And the biggest difference I can see there is in this tank, which had a thick layer of algae in it yesterday. But today, it's completely clean. There's a lot of detritus and stuff, but the, the glass is spotless. The ancestors are really early in the keep in this tank. And this is another of one of my many favourite tanks, the Congo Tetras. They are absolutely fantastic. I'm going to give everything a little bit of feed now, so I'll cut, I'll cut in a little feeding montage. Um, but they are like the most colourful. It doesn't always come across on the camera, but they're one of the most colourful fish I've ever kept for the way that they shimmer, the iridescence as they move among the light. Absolutely fascinating to watch. Beautiful, beautiful fish. They're also like little piranhas. <laughs> they go absolutely crazy when you put any kind of food in there. I don't think I've tried them with any food that they haven't just gone mad for. So they are doing really well. They are what we're basing the subscriber tank around. We're building a Congo biotope around these fish. Um, so all looking really happy, fat, healthy fish. Really active, really clean. Uh, really enjoying keeping those fish. And I can't wait to get them into a proper skate tank. And, we're going to do a biotope with them, they will look really good. Um, but yeah, really enjoying the fish room at the moment. Loads of great fish feeding eagerly. You know that way when sometimes you're having problems with fish or you're trying to get something to eat and it can get you down, but literally all my fish are like the most eager eaters in the world. It's a really happy feeling when you can just go to your tanks, chuck in some food and the fish are smash, they just go for it straight away. Everything's going right at the moment, touch wood. Um, really enjoying this at the moment. It's great stuff to see all the fish. Nobody's struggling. I, I know I've had a couple of bad things where I've lost obviously the little killifish, um, a couple of angels recently, but for the last few weeks, everything's been looking really healthy, really vibrant, really colorful. And I'm really happy about it. I'm loving my hobby at the moment. I made a video a couple of months back about how I was fed up, that everything was going wrong, everything was a chore. This is the upside, this is the swing, this is the, the good bit of when just everything goes right. So that's it, I know I went through that at 10,000 miles an hour. Sorry if I rushed through it. I just wanted to give a quick update of what's going on. Things are moving quickly in here, and I kind of like that, so it's good to know that. If you want to have a chat about what's going on, throw me some ideas, let me know what you're getting up to. Friday night, 9pm UK time, most Fridays we have a live stream, come and join me there, I'd love to see you, come and say hello, make sure you say hello to me in the comments, um, ask me any questions you've got to ask, give me any advice, tell me what you think you like, tell me what you don't like, we are doing the subscriber tank as well, so that's a tank where you're helping me pick the fish, we're doing an African Congo biotope, and that's what the Congo tips are for. Um, we're building that out, so I need to get the tank sorted next, that's the next challenge in there, but there's still lots of input I need from you, and this is something we're doing together, we're trying to be a bit collaborative, get everyone involved. So, 9pm, Friday night, see you there, and if I don't see you there, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and go and watch a few other videos. Bye!